What's up guys, Ergor here. Before we get into the video, by the time you're watching this, I'll be live on Twitch. So if you guys want to discuss the video with me, you can find me there at twitch.tv slash Ergor. Okay, so the new Settlers of Calgar League for, for PoE was just revealed earlier today. The stream was pretty crazy. There's a lot of really cool stuff coming with the League. I'm not going to go at, over everything in like complete detail. I'm just going to try and hit the high points here because I'm probably going to do an additional video that goes a bit more in depth into like the patch notes and stuff later. I just want to be able to kind of let you guys real quick see the stuff that I'm really excited for. So the main league mechanic is going to be the King's March Town. I think it was called King's March, Kingsmith, something like that. I think it was King's March, but it's a town that you're going to be able to do like kind of colony sim stuff. You're going to be able to choose what buildings you build. You can build like a farm and a mine. And when you go out into campaign zones and into maps and stuff, there will be various resources like Orichalcum and a couple others and there will be a bunch of monsters around them, kind of like a shrine and you kill the monsters you clear the area and then your miners that you hire at the town will come and collect the resource so that you can then use it to upgrade the town build new buildings you can use it to put on your boat once you have a harbor to send off to other places to trade for other resources it's a really interesting system and it fe it feels like a lot of different parts of it feed into each other which is really cool it looks really complex but i think it's going to be a really great addition to the game it feels like one of those league mechanics that it's like Unless it's massive flop, it's like almost guaranteed to go core because it feels like one of those things that's just going to be a part of the game now. They're also as kind of part of the mechanic, but it's actually mostly separate from it. There's an NPC who you can talk to him and give him gold to let you respec passive tree nodes. So you can, we can now respec with gold which it's gonna get more expensive. I think it gets more expensive with level or it gets more expensive with how many points you've removed. I'm not sure which it is. Um, so it'll be a lot more viable to do it early game rather than late game, but it's nice to still have that option. And then late game, I'm sure we'll still be able to use regrets if we don't wanna spend the gold cost. That same NPC also has a currency exchange, which is something I never thought they would actually put in the game. I never thought they would put gold, but especially also a currency exchange. It's essentially a way it's, it's kind of the way it was described in the reveal was as like a stock market for currency items. And it's, it's pretty much any currency items. It's your, your ones that are actually labeled as currency. So like your Alks, your chaos orbs, your alterations, all of those things you can trade for them. You can also trade for essences. You can trade for div cards. You can trade for catalysts. The way it was put is that anything that's stackable that doesn't have any other weird qualifiers on it, you can trade for on the exchange. And essentially the way it works is you're telling the NPC what currency you want and what currency you want to trade for it and how much for each. And then once another player puts a trade on that fits that criteria, then it's automatically traded to you and you each get what you're trading for essentially. So while you are trading with other players, it's like protected by the fact that the system does it automatically for both of you. So that's really nice. You don't have to worry about getting scammed. They're bringing back the recombinators from the Sentinel League, which is really exciting. The recombinators were able to make some really crazy items. I didn't get to use them too much myself at the time, but I know some really crazy stuff was done and a lot of people are really excited to see them come back. So I'm looking forward to trying to use it. It looks like it's going to be more free to use, but not literally free. I would assume it's going to have a gold cost because it's associated with the league mechanic, but it's not going to, I don't think it's like Sentinel League where you had to actually get the recombinator item to drop. I think it's just a thing you interact with in the town and then you put two items into it, probably pay the gold cost, and then they smush together. There's also rune crafting, which we're gonna get runes from the trading that you do with the ship in the harbor. Sometimes the trade, the people will trade you different rune, different types of runes 
for the resources you gave them. And the runes allow you to craft like unique effects from uniques onto gear. It's kind of like a reverse of the legendary potential system in Last Epoch. Because in Last Epoch, if a unique item has legendary potential on it, then you can craft stats from a regular item onto the unique. But this is like the reverse. You can craft unique effects from, from unique items onto a regular item. And it goes in the enchant slot, so it doesn't even take up your crafting suffixes and, and prefixes. So... In theory, you should still be able to craft an affix onto an item that also has room crafting on it. So we're going to have some really powerful items. In the Q&A, it was clarified that a lot of the more powerful effects will only be available for specific weapon types. So you wouldn't be able to just, oh, this is objectively the best unique effect that you can room craft. So every build is going to put it on every weapon they get. Well, if that weapon type that it's associated with doesn't really work for your build, then you can't use it. That's all the main stuff for the league mechanic. I don't think I'm missing anything. If I did, my bad. I'll go over it all in more detail in the next video, so I'll make sure I get anything I missed. So for more general changes, Gladiator's getting a rework, a Raider's getting removed and replaced with Warden. The Warden Ascendancy is going to have Bark Skin from the Affliction League, which is a buff that gives you... It, it, it stacks on you as you're not taking damage, and for every stack you gain armor, and I think you technically lose evasion. And then as you lose stacks from getting hit, then your armor goes down and your evasion goes up. So it's a very useful defensive ability. And when we had it before in Affliction League, it had mana reservation. So I'm gonna assume it's still gonna have mana reservation now. The rest of the Warden Ascendancy is kind of based around elemental ailments. There's the for each elemental ailment, they have a node that changes how it functions. For example, the one for Ignite is replacing all of your Ignites with Scorch instead. So that's kind of neat. And then Tinctures are back, and Tinctures are normally for melee, but Wardens will be able to take a node that makes Tinctures usable on ranged attacks. And then they have a couple other nodes that are based around tinctures. And then for anyone who's wondering about like all of the frenzy charge based stuff that Raider had, which was like the main appeal of the tree, Deadeye is losing Rupture because it wasn't a very great node anyway. And in its place, they're getting a frenzy charge based node to, to at least somewhat make up for the loss of Raider in that way. But tinctures being back is really cool. Again, like before, baseline if you aren't a warden they are only for melee and they changed them around a little bit now so that they now have a eight second cooldown for when you turn them off and it's a shared cooldown so if you turn one tincture off they all go on cooldown so you can't like rapidly swap between them and they have a ramping mana burn on them i, th I believe it starts at one percent per second and then over time as you have the tincture activated it burns more and more mana so you won't be able to necessarily keep those up forever but you if you have like some sort of like mana leech or something along those lines you'll definitely be able to keep them up most of the time melee is getting a massive rework melee totems are completely removed from the game they're completely gone banners no longer have a passive effect just from being on Instead, they only have their effect when you place them, but their effects are significantly stronger now to make up for that. And almost every melee skill in the game has had its damage buffed by approximately 75%. Veil Pact is back to Instant Leech again, but it's only for melee now. So that's a huge buff for melee as well. That's very nice to see. Rage has also been changed. The increased damage has been buffed a bunch, but they removed the attack speed and the move speed from it but they've also added a bunch more sources of rage maximum rage and rage buffs and sources of rage into the passive tree so that you don't necessarily have to go berserker in order to do a rage based build and speaking of berserker they nerfed berserk there's a bunch of new retaliation skills which look really interesting i'm definitely going to check them out they're like melee skills they're not necessarily melee, but some of them are melee, but they require some condition happening. A couple of them, the condition is blocking an attack. A couple of them, the condition is, I think, just getting hit in general. 
and then you can use the skill and they're usually like a big attack in an AoE. They look really cool. I'm re really interested in checking those out. For some endgame changes, we're getting a sixth map slot. So the fifth map slot will now be earned when you complete your first 10-way Maven encounter. And then the sixth one is like Last League, which you get from completing your first tier seven map. The Nameless Seer from Affliction League can now appear in T16 and T17 maps. He still has the selection of uniques that you can pick one to get for free. And he also now in T16 maps will have a scry map option that lets you swap the divination card pool of two maps. But you can only ever have one map swapped with one other map. You can't have it like linked to two other maps. Blighted and Blight Ravage maps can now drop double anointed amulets. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know how much that's going to get used because the odds of getting two anoints that both benefit one build are kind of slim, but if you get that, that that could be really good. The King in the Mists, which was the end game boss from the Affliction League is back. He no longer drops that which was taken, but instead he drops the Light of Meaning. Unique Jewel from Necropolis League. The Wildwood from Affliction can now also spawn in T16 and T17 maps, although the effects are likely reduced. Sentinels are back, which I really didn't expect. I didn't think we'd ever see Sentinels again but it's interesting how they're back instead of being an item that you use at the beginning of a map and they follow you around they're actually a thing that you can run into on the on the ground in a map and if you click on them then the sentinel pops out and does whatever the effects that that one has as they follow you around for probably a set period of time there's also a bunch of new chisels. E17 maps have also been nerfed. Their health has been reduced significantly and their damage has been reduced a good bit. The Valdo's puzzle boxes drop a lot more, but they're less likely to have the high tier chase uniques as rewards. That way you get to see them more often and actually interact with the RNG of the mechanic, but they aren't as likely to have good rewards. I think that is overall better because at least then you get to actually interface with the mechanic. I haven't gotten a single Valdo's puzzle box since they were added because I just don't play enough and they were so rare. They've also added some more random campaign changes like they did last league. And again, they're not really telling us what they are. They want us to kind of run into them on our own. So that'll be interesting to see what's new. And that's like most of the big stuff. I'm sure I missed a few things like auras don't drop when you die. There's a few other quality of life things that were posted on the, the POE Twitter over the last like week. I haven't done a quick summary of those yet. I'll probably throw that into the next video too. But yeah, overall, I'm really excited for this league. I mean, I'm always excited for new PoE leagues. They pretty much always look really cool. But this is like the craziest announcement we've ever gotten. This stream was two and a half hours long, which is crazy because it's only usually like an hour, hour and a half at most. And the patch notes have 30,000 lines. It's the biggest chunk of patch notes we've ever had. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I want to hear what you guys think about it. So if you want to talk to me about it, you can find me on my Twitch, like I said at the beginning of the video. I'll be glad to talk to you guys about it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.